Hello and welcome to our webinar today. My name's Abdi and I'm going to take a look at ESM today with you. Uh, and as the title suggests, um, we think this is the biggest opportunity for IT since IT. Over the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to explore this notion and have a look at leaving with you some actual takeaways that you can start to put in place today within your organization. Our agenda today is very simple. Um, we're going to start off with taking a look at that ESM opportunity, as I just suggested, and then we'll take you through a quick solution showcase where we'll have a look at some of the capabilities of Hornbill um, Service Manager uh, in a live demo, and then we'll come back and close with some questions at the end. Please feel free to enter any questions into the GoToWebinar questions pane. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to come back and cover those at the end. Uh, we'll keep um, delegate, or delegate Audio muted throughout the session just to uh, facilitate a better audio experience for everyone. If you feel like um, participating on social media, please do. Um, up here you can see our Twitter handle. It's at Hornbill. And we have a hashtag for today, which is hashtag Hornbill ESM. Uh, if you're a LinkedIn user, we're at Hornbill. And if you're an Instagram user, Hornbill Tech. We look forward to seeing some tweets and some posts from you. So on to the main subject of today's presentation. So um, we talked about the opportunity for IT and the whole idea of ESM being uh, a great opportunity. Um, let's explore that idea really quickly for you. Um, business services as we see it that sit outside of uh, IT are from a service management perspective relatively immature um, and you know in our experience of working with organizations typically we'll find that you know HR finance facilities uh, will be using either disparate point solutions or you know worse still uh, working off email uh, outbox outlook boxes uh, or indeed spreadsheets and post-it notes uh, have all been seen uh, on our travels if you like with uh, customers um, the key thing here being is that you know the the work that they're doing the challenges they face are not too dissimilar from those that one would face within the IT department in terms of managing your uh, requests managing your tickets managing your processes uh, delivering service ensuring customer satisfaction all of these are things that resonate with the work that we do as IT departments and so for us um, the opportunity here for IT is huge in that we have the know-how we know the, we have the experience and potentially we already have the tooling to be able to reach out to other parts of our organization and provide uh, this expertise and this knowledge uh, to help them to be more efficient and deliver better service to your end users, in this case, the employees. So as an IT department, you can elevate your strategic position. And, you know, historically uh, and you know, even to this day, uh, we hear IT departments suggesting that they struggle to demonstrate real value. Uh, for us, this is an opportunity for an IT department to go out into the wider organization and to demonstrate how they can uh, provide uh, their expertise and their knowledge to, to deliver real value outside of IT uh, to other other service domains, uh, should we call it that. And then uh, the final point really here is around digital business transformation. You know, this is here to stay. Uh, increasingly, we're, we're seeing uh, organizations and CIOs and um, IT departments being drawn into this whole concept of digital transformation. Uh, for the most part, we see that being uh, centered around uh, transforming the customer's experience. Um, but one of the things that we want to emphasize as part of this presentation is the need to uh, to to accept that this is something that's more than just a buzzword. And it's something that we need to embrace as an IT department inter internally as well as externally and to look at how uh, as a department we can go out and um, use our experiences to improve the customer experience uh, internally. Uh, when I say customer, I'm talking about employee in this case, as opposed to the external customer, which is typically the focus of uh, digital transformation. Okay. So looking at that employee experience in a little bit more detail, uh, this is really comprised of uh, the employee's technology, working environment, uh, all the different aspects of that within the workplace. Um, you know, the, the digital workplace is really the natural evolution of the workplace. You know, we, we, we're using technology for more and more stuff, and um, it's uh, an enabler for more and more aspects of any organization today. Um, and a lot of focus goes into 
delivering a better customer experience, but our emphasis of our presentation today is really looking at how you improve the employee's experience um, and shift uh, that to being more digital than perhaps the experience that is probably uh, prevalent in your in your organization today, if you like. Okay. So employee empowerment is about increasing productivity, increasing uh, and fostering innovation. It's about collaboratively working. It's about improving creativity. And most importantly, it's about satisfaction and retention. You know, if you've got happy employees, then you know, it stands to reason that they are going to be more productive, more creative, uh, and they will stick around uh, a lot longer. The key thing here really is that you know, this is something that your uh, employees are going to embrace because outside of work, they, they do spend uh, a lot of time exposed to service uh, that is delivered in a much more digital fashion. Uh, and one of the challenges we see increasingly is that they come, you know, as an employee, you come to work and a lot of that capability to do things digitally as and when you need to on your own time tends to um, uh, tends to be left behind at the door, if you like, as you get into work and, and you get back into more traditional ways of working within the workplace using emails and paper-based forms and so forth. Uh, so really the emphasis really here is on trying to improve on that experience for your employees. Okay. So uh, what should your digital employee experience um, deliver? Well, you know, for us, it should um, uh, deliver significant benefits. Um, but the key thing here is to define a strategy and an approach that is delivered from the employee's perspective. Um, as you would if you were, you know, as an organization looking at your customer experience, you would take time to, you know, walk a mile in your customer's shoes, try and understand what the customer experience is like when dealing with your organization. The same should be true for looking at your employee experience. Uh, it'd be important that you sit down with your employees and try and understand uh, from a uh, employees perspective what their experience is or like of dealing with you as a HR team, you as a finance team uh, or indeed yourself as an IT team if, if, if need be. It should um, support changes in the working styles that enable employees to work more transparently. Uh, it should allow employees to stay more connected. It should allow you to collaborate more efficiently and to get their jobs done. Really uh, a big part of this is about orchestration and automation. Wherever possible, uh, we should seek to engineer out routine tasks or processes and provide employees with uh, a much more seamless experience when uh, working through uh, you know, what can, can sometimes be very complex processes, if you like. Okay. Um, and last but not least, um, provide employees with the right tools and the right information at the right time. You know, typically that means providing some kind of self-service which would allow them to access the information, uh, to access the requests, to uh, seek updates as and when it's convenient to them in the same way that one would expect to do outside of work when looking to do your online banking or uh, you know, communicating with your um, uh, utilities providers. You know, these are all things that we do in our, in our, at our convenience, if you like, as opposed to uh, having to wait for those organizations to be open uh, in order to go in and, and have a conversation with them about what it is you need to do. Okay. Furthermore, um, I think one of the key things here is, you know, as I said, putting yourself in the employee's shoes. One of the nice things uh, for me is to, is to look at what's in it as an end user that's, that's going to make my life better. And if you can go around and ask those questions of your end users, whether that is uh, from a HR or finance or facilities perspective, what, what would make your life better or would make your life easier? Uh, you know, for a lot of, uh, of customers that we speak to, uh, oftentimes they are also consumers of these services. So whilst you might work in IT, you're also a customer of, of the HR team. So think about some of the challenges that you faced in dealing with that department or any other department what 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 do you find particularly frustrating uh, and what could be improved um, and you know the good news uh, from my perspective and in the sort of conversations that i've had with customers around this is that the you know as this quote suggests that it's difficult to to convert somebody's thinking but for the most part you know as per a recent study uh, done by Salesforce, you know, 71% of employees would like to be able to access the same level of technology and um, and um, experience, if you like, at work as they would experience outside of work. So I don't I don't think that you're doing anything other than pushing on an open door here in respect to 
trying to uh, get your customers, your end users on board with this. Uh, I think the challenge here is typically going to be around um, adapting the way that uh, traditional service domains will work in terms of dealing with the kind of requests that they are uh, working with. Uh, and perhaps that might th be simply through uh, the fact that there isn't a uh, anyone there selling them as a better way of doing that, if that makes sense. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here from IT's perspective to go in, have a chat with uh, other service domains and to look at how they go about doing effectively service management and to uh, look at the opportunities there for improvement uh, and to mentor and guide those departments through that change uh, and move to a situation where your end users are getting a better level of digital experience, if you like, uh, across the organization. Reality check, I always like to ask customers this, I and mean, again, you know, as an employee within your organization, take a few minutes just to have a think about some of the experiences you have in respect to the services that you might demand of or call upon with other departments. And as I said a moment ago, you know, if you think about some of those those approaches to getting support, you know, if you go in to look for help from facilities, there may be a particular you know, phone number you need to ring or a specific email address that you need to contact. You know, if you're on, on the same token looking for some help from finance or from human resources, there will be you know, specific forms in specific places on the intranet or on SharePoint that you would need to access. There isn't really a central place in in my experience of speaking to organizations that you go to get stuff done generally when we talk talk to organizations about this stuff. Um, and this is um, this is this is a key a key challenge. Um, you know, I often ask people the question, you know, if you were to bring in a new team member to your organization today, how much time would you take to explain that, you know, how to get support from IT? Where would you go to get help from HR? How do I make a request with finance? You know, there's going to be a whole bunch of different um, points of entry, if you like, to get that help. And so you know, that's what I would term, term, excuse me, as an analog employee experience. So taking that one step further, let's take a real world sort of scenario here and have a look at uh, what, what I mean by an analog experience. So in this case, we're going to have a look at the concept of onboarding a new employee. Uh, it's a great process to show up any issues in my view. Uh, I mean, it could be any process, but let's just pick this one. Um, as an example, if we could be Amazon and look at um, the order fulfillment process, um, it's fair to say that, you know, from the minute you press submit on your order for that new book or that new gadget that you're buying through Amazon, um, there's going to be multiple departments, multiple functions that are going to be involved in the fulfillment, if you like, of that purchase of that request uh, to buy uh, that thing. Um, and, you know, if you were to break and unpackage that whole process end to end, uh, you would see that there's going to be, you know, somebody going into, you know, make sure that the thing has been picked and packed and delivered out to the the logistics company who then have their process for you know making sure that they've uh, acknowledged collecting it and so on and so forth as well as in parallel there'll be a whole bunch of uh, process around payments and communications back to you as the purchaser right through to keeping you informed right through to the actual delivery and then the follow-up that comes in regards to the the customer sat piece that that's very good uh, um, or were very well executed by Amazon. So, you know, the essence of that being is that I would call that, you know, a strategic process that has multiple components to it, um, which is, you know, often quite seamless and quite um, uh, hidden from you as an end user. If we take that example and bring that back into the workplace, uh, something like onboarding a new employee, you could draw the same parallel. How seamless is that experience for you uh, or for an employee within your organization when they go to onboard a new employee? Is there a, you know, a single place to go how is that achieved today? Do they have to fill in multiple forms? Do they have to chase around different departments? So there's a whole bunch of uh, complexity that sits behind onboarding a new employee, and I, I, I don't d deny that in any way. What, what I really would like to just draw your attention to is the idea that it's not a simple, straightforward, one-stage process. There's multiple departments, multiple processes, multiple things that need to be passed from one team to another. Uh, and in the same way as that Amazon example I just talked about, uh, it needs to be properly coordinated. And you can only imagine the amount of time and effort that goes into you know, just painstakingly stripping that process back at Amazon to make sure that that is as efficient and as, as profitable and as, as um, customer centric as possible. So can we, you know, take a look at that from an internal perspective in regards to that employee experience of onboarding a new user? You know, 
how is that achieved today? Ask that question. Look at the steps that are uh, are taken by the requesting manager. What are the you know fulfillment steps taken by the different departments? Um, what visibility do I do I get as the recruiting manager? How well integrated are those various departments within that particular process? You know, is the ball getting dropped? Are there bottlenecks that need to be kink, uh, ironed out or kinks that need to be straightened? Um, what can we automate? How much of that could be uh, automated um, for us so that we we can remove time, we can remove inefficiency, we can remove error. Um, so all of that stuff that we consider. And you know, has the whole process been looked at end to end, or is this simply just a case of people getting their bit done and sort of throwing the ball over the over the fence to the next department, who hopefully have got the information they need uh, to pick that up and move that along. So, you know, is this being looked at as a what I would call a strategic process, or is this being looked at individually by each service domain doing what they need to do to make sure their bit's done uh, and not not having a bigger picture view of that, if you like. So there's lots of questions. I'm sure you can you can see where I'm coming from with this. Um, and that that's the, the kind of essence of uh, delivering good ESM is making sure that our service domains are all effectively aligned and in step with each other um, and making sure that there is a, um, a common uh, set of objectives to support the business needs to increase customer satisfaction, um, ideally a common platform so that you know they're all working within the same environment and there's clear lines of responsibility, the ability to measure uh, the performance and the efficiency across those different departments to identify bottlenecks, to look at where improvements can be made. Um, and then from an IT perspective, obviously there's the, the whole benefit of bringing into play all of the stuff that we we know and love from ITIL in terms of service design, service transition, service operation. These are all areas that can benefit other departments outside of IT and looking at how their services are pulled together, uh, either as at the individual departmental level or at the strategic business process level or service level, if you like. Okay. Here's some of the areas when we talk about ESM as, a, as an organization that we see um, customers looking to address and in this particular uh, case uh, you can see that we have worked with organizations uh, across all sorts of different parts of their their, their, their piece uh, whether that's you know looking at freedom of information requests that are coming in whether it's making sure that we're able to help customers to record and manage health and safety uh, issues and um, cases uh, whether it's you know marketing requests whether it's claims legal security, citizen response, human resources, facilities, a whole gamut of different departments that could be uh, benefiting from the ability to better manage, better coordinate, better orchestrate, better automate their particular service uh, delivery uh, requirements, if you like, okay? So in terms of Hornbill's critical ESM capabilities, what we are able to uh, and try to articulate for our customers um, is the idea that if you take that new starter process again, uh, if we look at that as a strategic business process, it's about orchestrating the process both at the service domain level where each service domain has a part to play in that overall process, but also to be able to define the overall end-to-end -end, what I'm going to call strategic business process, which is the you know the corporate level view that says in the way that Amazon has a process from order to delivery, how do we onboard a new user efficiently from the line manager requesting the, the need to onboard a new or to recruit a new employee right through to day one, getting that employee productive as efficiently as possible. So that, you know, the whole end-to-end -end process there is going to be broken down into its various stages. So I've tried to illustrate that in, in this slide. So let's just step through that real quickly here. Um, the idea here is that we've got various different service domains, in this case, HR, uh, going through their process for securing headcount. So at some level, a line manager would have the ability to raise a request that is going to kick off a, uh, um, a process that will either culminate in the headcount being agreed or not agreed and ultimately a recruitment cycle being run and the output of that recruitment cycle being that you're going to onboard a certain person or persons into a particular role at the end of that particular process. So again, we're going to go into the same level of detail on all of these, but at some point after that, we're going to look at 
initiating some sort of workflow or process within the facilities team to ensure that the right equipment is in place in the right place for that person or persons uh, to join the organization to use in the same way that at this particular point IT may get involved in the provision of uh, IT assets, services, and other aspects that might be required, access, etc., uh, to facilitate that user becoming or those users becoming productive employees, if you like. In the same sense, finance play their part in onboarding that employee from a payroll, etc., perspective. Human resources might come back in at some point and do some kind of induction process. IT might do some kind of training process. Uh, but ultimately, all of this sits within what I've called a strategic process, uh, strategic business process here, which is to go through the process of recruiting, enabling and facilitating an employee from the point where the request goes in initially to uh, potentially secure the headcount right through to the point where we might sit that employee down and have them as a productive employee within the organization. So that's a, a key part of what we offer as Hornbill is the ability to uh, have all of these service domains coexist side by side to have these domains define and deliver their own service catalogs uh, within those services to be able to articulate and orchestrate and automate their business processes and then to be able to at the top level come in and pull together and orchestrate these processes, individual processes into a master process, if you like, or a strategic business process, which allows uh, the organization then to be able to measure in its own right the end-to-end -end efficiency and uh, performance of that strategic business process of onboarding, in this case, employees. Now, this could equally be the offboarding process in the, uh, in, the, in the advent of GDPR. That's become even more important. But if you think about this process in the reverse, what's involved in taking uh, that uh, offboarding uh, process and making that a strategic process, what, what would be the, 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 the outputs and the inputs that are required, what steps and processes would need to be undertaken by each of these departments and others uh, to make sure that that person was offboarded seamlessly and that everything was uh, auditable in a way that was required from, your, from a compliance perspective. Okay. So what Hornbill looks to do is give you that whole piece and to make it as seamless as possible and again just drawing on that sort of amazon um, uh, notion that i talked about a moment ago you know what your recruiting manager in the hornbill experience would look like from an esm perspective would be that they would be able to go into one place make a request fill out all the relevant information if more information is required it would be uh, quickly and easily uh, made available to them through the self-service uh, and you know the ultimate goal here is to give that recruiting manager in this particular process uh, example a single uh, place a single uh, point of of um, information and a single view if you like of where that particular request to onboard that user has got to and um, you know give them visibility if you like give them the ability to see clearly as you would expect with your amazon order where that thing is in terms of its expected delivery time date in the same way uh, we can see that here from the humble view here of a uh, service request to onboard a new person okay so that's the the overall experience uh, hopefully uh, that all makes sense and what we're going to do now is uh, step through and show you some of that in action uh, actually within the uh, solution itself and so at this point i'm going to take us in and we'll have a look at the Hornbill Service Manager solution in action. And, and the good starting point for today's uh, presentation is going to be to look at the end user's experience because one of the key things for us was about trying to deliver a single place where your end users can go to raise a request on any of the different um, providers that they might be working with or service domains uh, that, that might be providing the services to them. So let me just log in here very quickly. So I'm logging in as an end user here. This is Tom and Tom's world. And Tom is a user uh, who's a line manager within our demo environment here. And what I've done here is log into Tom's self-service view. And we're going to take a, a quick walk through and have a look at some of the stuff that he can see through here. But the essence being um, Tom goes to one place, has visibility of all the services that he has access to. And those services may be uh, published by one or more service domains, be that you know, business services, facilities, IT, 
or, or people services, HR in this particular example. Just to get us going, let's start off with perhaps a, an IT service. So um, in this particular case, maybe Tom's working from home, uh, has a issue with his VPN. Obviously he can come into the portal, he can see that service, he can drill down into that service and be informed proactively that we know there's a potential issue with that service, as well as giving him access to things like known issues, knowledge, as well as previously raised requests and the ability to then come in and make a new request either for help or for uh, something to be provided to him. So in this particular case, he's looking for some assistance. So let's click through here and under the VPN um, service, we can see that he has an option to report the fact that he's been refused a connection. And again, under here, we can start stepping through some proactive support uh, questions that and prompts that will allow us to try and triage this issue and identify where possible uh, where the challenge might lie and hopefully resolve this without having to raise a request in the first instance. So in this particular case, having stepped through reviews, a few steps here, he says the issue still persists and going forward, he can see here that he's been presented with further information, perhaps even a knowledge article that might uh, be of benefit. And ultimately, had that not resolved this issue, he can still step through link an asset to that request and go ahead and raise that request. So again, just a very quick example, and I know that's an IT example, but it gives you a sense of the kind of capability that you have there in order to be able to try and triage things, suggest things, present knowledge, uh, and hopefully get the customer to resolve that challenge or that issue or that request for themselves. Um, so that was an IT example. Let's step back and have a look at a couple of other examples here. Um, the first one I want to have a look at is under uh, the finance side of things. So again, if you're looking for some information from your finance team, you're looking to you know, query an invoice or raise a PO query, uh, all of these things could be presented as services to the users that have the rights to see those services. So again, it's an entitlement based view. Uh, so as a user, Tom only sees the services that he's entitled to. Uh, and under those services, he only sees the catalog items that he is entitled to under his, his rights as an individual part of a team, department, role, whatever the, the requirement might be. Stepping further into this, if we d drill down into something like people services from a HR perspective, um, here we've got a, a few other services uh, listed. Um, so let's take a look at uh, something like manage my talent. So under here as a line manager, Tom has the ability to come in and look to recruit, look to onboard, look to offboard, uh, and then a number of other different services that we have available to you here. So again, in terms of stepping through uh, one of these, let's very quickly go in and look to onboard a new employee. Um, so this is assuming that Tom already has permission to onboard somebody. So he's going to come in here and say, right, I've now got the OK to bring this user on. They've been recruited and um, we're going to bring them in as a manager. In this particular case, they're going to be starting uh, in a role in September and they're going to be in the sales team as a sales manager. OK, so we can step through here. Uh, in this particular case, it's then presenting me with the options that are available for that particular role uh, and that particular type of position. Uh, being as um, this user is a manager, he's got a choice between a MacBook and a Surface Book. He's got uh, various choices in terms of phones. Again, depending on your options, um, it selected previously, then different things would come into play at this particular level. Uh, and at a certain point, you can go ahead and raise that particular onboarding request. And that comes in, and we can see here immediately as the requesting manager that there's actually a whole bunch of uh, process steps that are gonna be taken uh, to fulfill that particular request, okay? So if we step back here, um, that was managing my talent. One of the other parts of the um, HR pieces that I wanted just to cover off was the idea of coming in and looking at things like my employment. So under this particular service, you've got you know various other things like being able to update your details, reporting grievances. So again, from a HR perspective, any of those services can be built in here. Uh, and for, for the purposes of things like grievances and reporting um, any, any sorts of issues that these are very heavily process driven services that, uh, that, or that, that can be um, orchestrated within the, the Hornbill platform and we'll come back and look at the process engine side of things in a little while. Just to um, close off on the request side of things, what I was going to do is just come into office and supplies. And again, this is just another option here in terms of perhaps sort of business services type um, 
processes that you might push out here. It could be, you know, to do with repo graphics, requesting uh, stuff to be printed. It could be about business cards. It could be about booking a taxi. You know, it could be as simple as simply saying that I need a taxi uh, today at this particular time, pick up from reception. Um, and, you know, this is something that's going to just simply uh, get posted off to the reception or directly off to your taxi account firm and um, basically arrange for that taxi to be uh, to be delivered to the reception in this particular instance. So you know, the whole notion of these services and the whole notion of ESM is that you're giving your employees, you know, a single point to go to to interact with multiple service domains to get help to seek knowledge to request stuff um, and it's it's fairly self, fairly self-explanatory from that perspective okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave uh, Tom there at this particular point and we're gonna come back in and log out as Tom I'm gonna log back in here as a different user in this case I'm gonna log in as Sue uh, who is going to be our HR um, specialist um, so we just log in here very quickly. So Sue is our HR specialist, as I suggested, and what we're going to uh, look at here is um, the view that our agent in this particular case is going to get of those sorts of requests. So on logging in, Sue's presented with a, a homepage, um, but if we step past that, we can get into what we can call our request list, which is our queue, uh, and in here we can see all of the different requests that may have been raised against this particular service domain. The key thing to note here is that within Hornbill, uh, everything is built around the services. So one of the key things to look at here is the concept of the service portfolio. Um, and as the HR uh, service, uh, HR specialist in this particular case, Sue can only see the services that are relevant to her domain, in this case, the HR domain. Um, and so under here, we can see if I click on my employment service, uh, the different services that have been uh, defined and in this particular case the different catalog items that have been defined underneath that particular service so uh, under here you've got you know request a transfer report a grievance and what have you um, so all of these here uh, are the the items that we saw presented on the self-service but the essence of this being is that underneath the um, Underneath the service portfolio, each domain can define the different services that they provide, uh, and within those uh, particular services, they can also then define who are the subscribers of that service, so as to ensure the right people can see those services when they log into the portal. Okay. So with that said, if I come back in and have a look at Sue's request list, we can see here a, an example here for a, a, depart, a department request for new headcount. We can see the taxi booking request. I know it probably wouldn't go to HR in the real world, but just for the purposes of today's demo, I just routed that request here so we can see that it's come in. Um, and that, that might be the sort of request that, that, um, that gets picked up and dealt with. Um, just to give you an example of a request here that, that has been um, in play for a little while now, uh, I've got one here which is uh, around onboarding a new headcount. And so various tasks have already been completed in the, in the fulfillment of this process. Um, we can see the original request here was to onboard uh, a new role, a uh, new person as a scrum master here. Um, and we can see that a whole bunch of different tasks have, on, have been undertaken already and closed off um, by various people within the HR and the onboarding team uh, in terms of carrying out the interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And we're now at the point where we have um, a task sitting here waiting for us to uh, decide whether the person that had been offered the job has accepted it and if I go ahead and say they have accepted it we can see that the process moves forwards and starts to ask me for further information in here so in here I might say it's Abdi and and they're going to work in the sales team and the line manager is going to be Alan Castle and the start date is going to be on the 31st. So again, the process engine is then going through and driving through what happens next. Um, and we can see here that as a HR team, I'm being asked to prepare a welcome pack in induction program. And as we step through these different stages, we'll get to a point where actually it's going to invoke uh, a process on the um, HR, oh, sorry, on the IT team, if you like, uh, to to kick off their onboarding stage, if you like. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of leave Sue's world in terms of picking up this request, and we're gonna just touch on one other aspect, which is the idea of um, documentation. So from a you know HR perspective, there's often a lot of uh, process documentation required uh, to be managed, and one of the things that we do offer 
uh, people in that in that uh, in, in the context of the specialists is the ability to manage all their documentation and to find all their documents in here and again that's probably an area for a whole uh, webinar in its own right but the key essence of this being is that all of the key processes pre process documentation can all be recorded within uh, the system here uh, and give given access to the relevant people that need to see that at the relevant time okay so that's Sue's world I'm going to just flick over here and we're going to look at Graham Graham being uh, an IT agent in this particular case um, the reason for picking up Graham here was just to kind of pick up on the request that we'd raised earlier on to onboard uh, a new user so you can see seven minutes ago we made that request as Tom uh, and I come in here and pick it up as a notification in Graham's world and from here we can see that uh, there is the request details and there's the Adam Peaty that we said we were going to onboard um, and in this particular instance the process is gated by somebody in this team taking ownership of that particular request so if I go ahead and take ownership of this request what we should see is that the process start to uh, progress and thanks to Hornbill's orchestration and automation we should see a number of things happen uh, we should see it create uh, uh, the user in Hornbill, but more importantly, also go off and create uh, this user uh, account on Salesforce automatically in the background. So let's go ahead and assign that um, to get to Graham. And we can see that the process has kicked off and it's taken uh, a number of steps here, including going ahead and creating that user on Salesforce. And um, uh, you can see here that it's actually created that user and uh, probably not best practice to post their username and password in here but just for the purposes of today's demo you can see that that's actually uh, put that into there for us um, so the steps here in this particular case now is to go ahead and IT have some jobs to do in terms of configuring the equipment so let's go and say we've completed that uh, we've set up an email account and we can say that we've completed that as well and having done that install some information some applications so again uh, all of this is being driven by the process engine to get particular individuals, teams, or departments to do stuff either manually or automating stuff through integrations. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to say that we don't need, uh, uh, we have issued the mobile rather. Um, and having done that, the system then has gone off and followed the process, in which case, in this particular example, has gone off and actually raised a new service request uh, on a different team. In this particular instance, uh, the finance team so uh, sorry facilities team so if I log in here very quickly as John uh, John here is our facilities guy um, the purpose for just for looking over into John's world is just to illustrate again the ability for us to have different departments uh, working together in the same instance of Hornbill uh, publishing their services um, having services that are interacting uh, with other services so the idea being that in that non-boarding service from IT there's actually a service uh, request that's been raised against the facilities team in this particular instance which is um, related to my original request um, but is a separate request in its own right uh, follows its own process and as and when uh, John and the facilities team come in and complete their steps that they need to do in this case to issue a security pass and further to that go ahead and issue a parking permit um, we should see that this moves the process forward uh, and resolves the facilities ticket if you like or process uh, but also comes back and updates and resolves our primary onboarding request which was sat in this case with IT uh, as an example so coming back to that notion I had earlier on of, uh, of strategic business processes hopefully you can see the uh, ability for you to set out your overall onboarding um, strategic process and within that process break down all the different individual steps and processes that each service domain that interacts or is a part of that overall onboarding process uh, has to undertake automate orchestrate and uh, provide integrations to make that as seamless as possible all the whilst giving both the agents and the end users making the requests visibility of what is going on with that particular request at any point in time uh, and the ability to come in at any time and update or seek further information through the self-service if they need to okay last but not least um, before we close out just wanted to touch on very quickly the admin side of things so one of the things that has been driving a lot of what we've seen there today is the Hornbill business process engine so what we have a have a quick look at here is the the actual process that we just stepped through there for onboarding that new user um, so within the uh, Hornbill platform you'll have access to the orchestration engine which gives you the ability to define whatever process um, you have 
and these processes can be multi-stage as we can see here we've got an assignment a fulfillment and enablement stage in this particular case on the second step of this process we can see that there's some parallel processing that's going on between the green and the amber node so in this particular instance all of these uh, have to come back together before we move forwards um, and what we can also see here is uh, in the bright yellow nodes these are actual integration nodes where uh, at some point the process owner has come in and said I want to drop in an integration call and that integration call has allowed them to effectively call out to either a cloud based uh, service or to an on-premise based uh, application and to initiate some action in this case it could have been something like going into Microsoft Azure for example and creating a new user or it could well be that you wanted to uh, drop into Salesforce which is one of the examples we use there today and actually create a new user uh, on Salesforce so all of these um, integrations are simple to set up code free uh, and uh, can be can be undertaken very quickly and very easily uh, the, ver the versioning of the processes is, is automatic so you know you have the ability to step forward and step back in terms of your process versions um, and the key thing for you uh, is that this is a, a process engine that can be delivered to somebody outside of IT to use so uh, one of the key uh, things that we strive to do at Hornbill is to make this as simple as possible to use so that somebody in a, in a HR or a finance capacity as a line manager or a business uh, owner can come in and actually define their processes for uh, whatever it is that they're looking to orchestrate within their department, if you like. Okay. Last but not least, um, in terms of the uh, Hornbill side of things is the analytics, just very quickly in terms of time today. Um, what I was just going to touch on here was the ability at the at the kind of combination of all of this is to build out uh, the notion these dashboards here can be uh, cross departmental so in this particular case once you've got your HR your IT your finance your facilities all up and running uh, and running their services then it's possible then to start doing uh, this kind of thing which is drawing on all of those metrics to pull together a high level view of how we're doing in terms of our enterprise service management aspirations one of which might be that we want to drive up the number of service requests that are logged by self-service the other might be uh, looking at the customer sat uh, across those different departments uh, and trying to drive the overall customer satisfaction up okay so with that i'm going to come back out of the presentation and we're going to have a look at uh, a, a quick close here um, but i'm sure if anyone's got any questions feel free to uh, post them into the, uh, the questions section uh, and we'll come back and have a look at those uh, in a little while okay so just drawing your attention to a uh, case study so um, there is a lot more detail about this on the uh, Hornbill website and in the um, follow-up email from today's presentation I will include a link to this so you can go and have a look at this but this is a, a Hornbill spotlight document or article uh, blog post which is around our work that we've done with uh, the London Borough of Wolfham Forest um, who have uh, embarked over the last 18 months or so on delivering a unified enterprise service management um, uh, platform and they had set out from the beginning to implement a uh, service management uh, environment for for IT, HR, and business services. Um, we've done uh, a very basic amount of implementation and training, and the the great thing there is, and and the guys at Wolfram Forest can testify to this themselves within the um, the spotlight, is that they have been able to embrace this and take this forward themselves without uh, a lot of work from us. Um, obviously. Uh, a lot of processes to define and they've stepped through a whole process of building out processes for things like onboarding, requesting new mobiles, reporting stolen mobiles, uh, looking to uh, reallocate equipment, um, looking for documentations, um, subscribing for season and ticket uh, season ticket loan applications and a whole bunch of uh, other stuff that sits across the organization including you know being able to procure um, uh, stationary and things like that as well so you know a very interesting case case study and uh, I'm sure the guys at Wolfram Forest would be more than happy to uh, to, um, to speak to you if you wanted to reach out to them uh, there are links in that uh, spotlight to uh, Sam Eaton's um, 
LinkedIn if you wanted to have a chat with her, for example. Um, but you know, this is just one of many accounts where we've been able to work with customers to deliver a, uh, an ESM outcome. Uh, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about any other um, questions that you might have in relation to that. Some actionable takeaways, because for me, it's always good to, to be able to sort of take something away from something like this webinar and think, uh, what could I put into place play today? So just to kind of wrap up with this last slide before we look at some of the questions that might have been uh, uh, posted, um, what we're looking at here is the ability uh, to take what you've seen today and see, see if there's um, some aspects that you could take away and put into place today, uh, whether that's with Hornbill or, or another tool. Uh, I don't think that this specifically matters what tool you're using. Obviously, we prefer you using Hornbill, but uh, the key thing here is, um, you know, what can we put into place? And so the first thing I would suggest is look at um, identifying those service domains that you could work with um, to try and um, pinpoint and um, identify a, a mentor or a champion, somebody within that department that you could um, talk to and work with to try and bring their thinking in line with what we've talked about today in terms of the ESM and the ability to improve the experience for their end users um, and the uh, experience for their agents in terms of being able to uh, manage their requests and their um, processes and the services in a more efficient way um, looking for def you know definite opportunities for improvement so you know things like efficiency is that is the way they're working uh, highly inefficient you know are they using shared mailboxes are they using uh, paper-based forms are they using SharePoint or other intranet type uh, forms uh, that need to be completed, downloaded, printed, whatever, you know, all those options are things that we see. Uh, how are they actually working and managing those queues of the requests that they're having? Are they, are they you know, we've seen post-it notes, we've seen spreadsheets. Um, there's, there's a whole um, range of different things that we see people using and that, you know, if you can get in and understand how they manage their tickets and how their requests and their uh, processes, then that would be uh, a good starting place for looking at how you could improve efficiency for them if you like. Um, looking at customer satisfaction, you know, get, get, uh, get if you can, the, the champion to go back in and have, have a conversation with some of their customers, try and understand what their customer's perspective is of the service that they're receiving um, and um, see if there's any things that the customers could suggest would be uh, an improvement in the way that they uh, interact. You as, as, a, as a user or a customer of that service domain may be able to also provide some advice. You know, if you're in IT and you're talking to somebody from HR, you would probably have experience of having dealt with HR or facilities or finance, you know, bring that to the table and uh, try and illustrate how that could be made simpler, easier, more efficient by potentially being able to do that through a portal at a time that's convenient to you rather than having to phone up during office hours or fill out a particular form, for example, uh, from the internet. Um, looking at that from that perspective, obviously that brings into play the idea of self-service and being able to do this as you need it, when you need it, at, you know, a time that's convenient to you. Uh, having all of these different domains um, potentially published in one place, so you've got a single place to go. So again, as you talk to these uh, service domains and these um, people that you've identified as your potential champions have a look at um, trying to paint that picture and uh, and uh, understand how uh, you can help them to to bring that to, to fruition if you like um, look at key services and key processes are there a particular process or a particular service that they have a challenge with it might not necessarily be the most complicated process but it might be the one that takes the most time so you know where are they spending their time where are they um, being frustrated by not having the right information first time round, um, you know, all of those sorts of questions will help you to identify those. Um, try and look for those services or processes that cross multiple domains. So if there's a service like we identified today with the sort of new starter side of things, is there a process that goes across different services that would be uh, better um, served if it was more orchestrated um, so that there is clear definition of where responsibility lies what it, what the inputs and the outputs would be from each department uh, as that that uh, request or that uh, requirement goes through that particular process look for um, opportunities for orchestration where can we take away human um, activity minimize error where can we automate where can we drive behavior so that things are repeatable measurable uh, and we can then start to look at the efficiencies that we can gain from, um, you know, removing the complexity of having to do mundane stuff day, to, day in and day out, which, again, shouldn't be any sort of new 
revelation for, for those of you who work in IT today, because you may have already gone through this with regards to implementing your service management solution. Um, governance and MI, um, look at where you can um, take the orchestration and to uh, and um, implement or uh, process such that you're more compliant with the governance and the compliance that you might have to follow in that particular area. So again, pointing specifically at things like HR, there's going to be a lot of processes within HR specifically around you know, grievance and uh, the like that will be fairly heavily regulated and there will be a requirement for being able to or, or provide an audit trail, et cetera, uh, around how something was dealt with. So those are the sorts of things that you can uh, bring to the table and look at how the orchestration side of things can, can help. Um, but also look at um, the kind of KPIs and measures that, that could be uh, uh, brought to bear. You know, one of the first ones I would probably suggest would be looking at customer satisfaction um, in terms of how satisfied the end users might be with the service that they're providing from facilities or finance or whatever it might be. The last point on here really is looking at collaboration. So this is a, you know, something that's going to have to be a collaborative effort between yourself and the service domain. You know, obviously, um, you guys potentially, if you're if you are in IT and you're going out to try and uh, help other parts of the organisation with this ESM message, um, are the experts in, in in service management, and you would need to collaborate to try and bring that expertise to bear in these other areas. Okay. The last point really here is really about looking to implement quick wins uh, that are highly visible. Um, for maximum impact, you know the onboarding new users one is always a good one because that's always a a challenge uh, in most organisations we speak to. Uh, offboarding, particularly nowadays with uh, the advent of GDPR, you know having a robust offboarding process that can be uh, fully audited uh, is obviously uh, key as well. Um, so think about having having a look at some of those aspects as well. Okay. So with that said, let's um, move on. Um, is there any specific questions? If anyone has any further questions, feel free to, to post those. Um, I've got a couple of quick questions here um, so far. So the first one was um, uh, in relation to uh, the ability to have uh, multiple domains, uh, service domains um, or departments uh, uh, coexisting uh, and the visibility of data. Um, as I said earlier on, the key thing here is about the services that you define. So as a, um, as a, service domain owner, you would go in and define the different services that your domain delivers to the organization. So if you're HR, you define those HR services as we saw earlier on when we looked at Sue's world. Um, and the key thing there is that when you set up those services, you would articulate A, who is receiving those services and B, who is providing support for those services. And on the basis of both of those two um, uh, definitions, if you like, the visibility is restricted then just to those who are relevant. So if I'm raising a HR request, it's on, on the basis that I'm entitled to raise one. And if I'm seeing that request as a uh, HR specialist, it's on the basis that I'm, uh, again, entitled or uh, enabled to do that on the basis of my role and my rights. OK, so that's important. Um, I think we had a second question here about um, data. Uh, obviously, if we're looking at doing something here from a um, uh, from a uh, ESM perspective in terms of uh, where's the the data held. Um, so all the data is actually held in the in the uh, geography that you elect to subscribe in. So for those of you subscribing potentially in the European Union, then uh, your data would stay within uh, within that uh, geography. If you're subscribing from the US, then obviously it'd stay in the US. So uh, it's key to key to note that we take that side of things very seriously. Um, I got a question here about reporting. Um, obviously, from a reporting perspective, the uh, ability to report is a rights-driven thing. Each service domain would have the ability to generate their own reports. Um, each user has the ability to create their own dashboards that allow them to look at their work operationally. Um, and ultimately, uh, there are the ability to create those uh, management dashboards that I showed earlier on. OK, so I think that was it in terms of questions. Um, what I would like to do is just thank you all for your time today. Um, and most importantly, um, just point you to what next. What we'll do is follow up with a, an email uh, at some point later today uh, with regards to uh, all of the uh, information that um, I pointed to earlier on. So there'll be a link to uh, 
my LinkedIn account with um, some resources that you can access from there, including that Waltham Forest case study and a few other things, including also a link to the recording of today's session. Um, feel free to have a test drive on the Hornby web website. We have a, a sandbox up there, so if you wanted to have a, a quick um, look at all the aspects that I've showed you today, there's all of that is also accessible through the uh, through the Hornby website under the Try Now button. Um, and finally, if you are uh, interested in um, exploring this a little bit further uh, as part of that package that we'll send out in the email today, there will be an option there for you to uh, schedule a, a Humble ESM assessment where uh, we can take you through uh, a series of steps to try and understand uh, and help you with uh, positioning ESM within your organization uh, and looking at where uh, the opportunities lie there for you to position uh, this with other departments within your organization how to go about doing that more efficiently okay so with that said uh, I'd like to thank you all for your time today uh, I would apologize for the um, messed up with the slides a little bit at the beginning there and the visibility but um, as I say we'll re-record that bit and I'll submit that recording later on today for you guys to uh, to access okay thanks again and um, we hope to hear from you soon <laughs>